Gentlemen, the live debate on the last word with Matt Cooper and the Irish Times. Well, we're back. And my thanks again to the Irish Times for giving us the use of the room here today for the debate, the Lisbon Treaty referendum debate. And Michael O'Leary has joined us. He says he wasn't late. He was just making the dramatic late entrance. And he's already come in and presented copies of books to everybody, 100 reasons to vote yes for Lisbon. But we'll see at the end of the debate whether you think you should be voting yes or should be voting no. We're going to give the next hour and a half of the programme to this debate. We're going to try and go through as many of the issues as possible. If you want to get in touch with us. Our text line is 083 4100 102. That's 083 4100 102. And we're going to give plenty of time to everybody to express their point of view here on our panels. So let me tell you who our two panels are again, just to remind you. On the no side, Joe Higgins so of the Socialist Party, MEP for Dublin, uh, Patricia McKenna from the People's Movement, and also Declan Ganley, the leader of Libertas. On the yes side, the, the Fianna Fáil Minister for Foreign Affairs, Michal Martin. Uh, beside him, Marion Harkin, MEP for Ireland Northwest, and also Michael O'Leary, the Chief Executive of Ryanair. Our format this evening is that we are going to, somebody has a mobile phone that they have left on, if they wouldn't mind turning it off please Michael. The format is going to be 90 seconds for each of our speakers to set out their case, uninterrupted but uh, unlike Colonel Gaddafi in the United Nations last night who was given 15 minutes and managed to go on for 100 minutes, if they go over their 90 second allotment they will hear this sound and they will be told to desist immediately or else I'll just stop them getting in at later stages of the debate. So, as the no side won the last time, I'm going to give Joe Higgins, who is the only MEP at the moment who is canvassing for a no vote in this particular referendum, the first 90 seconds to state his case. Joe Higgins. Uh, the Lisbon Treaty provides for very fundamental changes in how Europe would be uh, managed in the course of the decades ahead. The, its agenda is primarily the agenda of corporate Europe, of the very big business boardrooms, of the military establishment, of the armaments industry and the political elite. And it is inimical to the interests of workers and the vast majority of ordinary people across uh, Europe. The economic crisis right across the European Union at the present time is the context of this uh, debate. That crisis results from the type of economic policies pushed by the European Union for two decades now. Deregulation, liberalization, privatization, resulting in huge unemployment and major suffering. Lisbon encapsulates more of that neoliberal agenda. For example, in the common commercial policy, uh, making possible further uh, pressure for the privatization of services like health and education provides for a massive increase in militarization and a huge boost to the armaments industry and it uh, makes no step forward whatsoever for workers rights either in this country or in Europe and in fact institutionalizes the anti-workers rights um, judgments of the European Court of Justice where they found for employers who were exploiting migrant uh, workers uh, as opposed to those who are trying to protect them. Margaret. Very good. You got in just aside the 90 seconds as well. Thank you very much, Joe Egan's first on the no side. So to start the yes argument, I'm going to ask the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Michal Martin, to give us his 90 seconds. Well, basically, since the, its foundation, uh, the European Union has been the, the great driver uh, of peace, prosperity and social progress in our history. Time and time again, it has proven that countries can achieve more by working together um, than on their own. The Union has opened up markets, it has enabled commerce uh, to develop, and it has powered what even today remains the most significant period uh, of econo economic growth in Ireland and indeed across the European Union. It's also advanced the cause of equality, uh, decent working conditions and environmental protection. However, the world is changing fast and we cannot expect the Union to continue working for us if it's forced to operate uh, with out-of-date rules. And many of these rules were put in place before the internet existed, before the collapse of the Iron Curtain, uh, and when issues such as globalisation and climate change were almost unknown. So therefore the Lisbon Treaty is a modest treaty, an attempt to reform 
and modernize the union so that, it, so that it works well for us into the future, as it has in the past. The people of Ireland last year said that they had a number of concerns with the possible implications of the treaty. We went back to our other 26 members of the European Union, uh, and they gave us a series of binding legal guarantees which addressed the concerns articulated by the Irish people. And it was agreed that we would retain the automatic right to a commissioner, um, and that's consequent, obviously, on a yes vote. Supporting the treaty is common sense. That is why 90% of people who create jobs in this country are saying that a yes vote will help job creation. Sorry, Minister. Economic I have to cut you off there. You can make your other arguments a little bit later on the programme. I'm going to return now to the no side and invite Patricia McKenna to put forward your argument, please. Um, thank you. Now, first of all, I think people have to understand that this is not a vote about being in or out of Europe, and it's not about the past track record of the European Union. It's about the type of Europe we want going forward into the future for ourselves and for our children. Now, the economic crisis that we're currently in has been a godsend for the yes side, which they have used to frighten the living daylights out of people, and there is no foundation for the argument that the Lisbon Treaty will solve our economic woes. It was drafted at a time when the economic policies pursued by European leaders are exactly the type that, are, that the Lisbon Treaty is based on. The so-called legal guarantees are not what we're voting on, they're not in the treaty, and they do not outweigh the treaty. The treaty is what we will be voting on, and in the European Court it is quite clear that that is what the Court will decide on. They have no legal basis in relation to this issue. All of the issues we were worried about last time, in the loss of voting strength for Ireland in the Council of Ministers, the loss of our opportunity to block uh, policies we don't like in education, public health and many other areas still remain. There is a mutual defence clause in this treaty. There is a solidarity clause in this treaty which causes major concern for peace activists right across Europe because it allows for the justification of preemptive strikes to uh, supposedly stop terrorist attacks. But it allows for the type of rep repetition of what happened in Iraq. The European Defence Agency that was set up at the behest to the arms industry is given legal status in this treaty and will have huge influence over the military spending of member states because it will assess our military capabilities. Thank you very much Patricia McKenna from the no side. We're going to return now to the yes side and Marion Harkin MEP. Thank you, Matt. Well, Michael O'Leary has given us a book, 100 Ge Reasons to Vote Yes to Lisbon. I'm afraid I'm doing the low-cost version. I'm only giving you five reasons. But the first two are to do with democracy. I've just been re-elected to the European Parliament, and the people of the North and West expect me to represent them and their views in the Parliament. As of now, only about two-thirds of all the legislation that comes from Brussels is under the influence of the Parliament. However, if we say yes to Lisbon, 95% of all of the legislation coming from the EU will be under the influence of the Parliament. That's parliamentary democracy. That's increasing and enhancing democracy. Second reason, national parliaments have a greater say. I won't go into the finer detail, but the bottom line is this. If half of all national parliaments agree that a piece of legislation is not needed at European level, it would be better at national or regional level, and they get the European Parliament or the Council to agree with them, the legislation is put in the bin. It's not even discussed. So Irish people get a second bite at the cherry, if you like, with their vote in influencing what happens at European level. The third reason is that this treaty will allow the, the European Council to act more effectively. Right now, every six months, it changes its president. What company would change its president every six months? This will allow it to act strategically and effectively. We've got our guarantees. We've discussed them later. And finally, I'm asking Irish people to join the 27,413,533 European citizens who have Sorry. already said yes. Got to stop you there. Thank you very much, Marion Harkin. Now, our third and final speaker on the no side, uh, who rejoined the campaign recently, uh, the Libertas leader, Declan Ganley.